Crazy Crab in the house. And today I want to talk about Lucasfilm a little bit and just kind of summarize some of the problems that we've learned about. We can assume there's a bunch more problems we haven't learned about. And this begs the question, what is going on with Lucasfilm and why hasn't Kathleen Kennedy been fired yet? This is not a Star Wars news channel, so I don't talk a lot about this stuff, but I'm going to try to kind of shove it all into one video. All the crap that has gone on with Lucasfilm, mainly people getting fired, production problems left and right, and I'm not even referring to the final quality of the films. Because even if you love The Last Jedi, even if it's your favorite movie of all time, you still cannot deny that there's major problems with Lucasfilm. And by the way, if you did love The Last Jedi and think it's an awesome movie and you wouldn't change a thing about it, I do have some recommendations for you because I want to be friends with you guys. I'm tired of fighting. So here's a few other films I think you would absolutely love. Number five, Star Wars The Holiday Special. You get the real Star Wars characters and actors, but they act completely weird and out of character, and the whole thing is absolutely bizarre and all over the place. You will love it. Number four, The Core. I don't even know what to say about this movie other than it's right up your alley. Number three, Battlefield Earth, an absolute classic. Trust me. Number two, Mac and Me. If you liked The Last Jedi better than Empire Strikes Back, you will definitely like Mac and Me much more than E.T. And number one, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Oh my gosh. Stop! Don't do it! The people! Crazy crap. How can you compare these movies to The Last Jedi? Okay, okay, okay. I get it. Those movies are not that bad. Real talk. I guess if you love the movies and you don't care what's happening behind the scenes, that makes sense. Hey, who cares, right? You're getting good movies. But most of us are less than happy about the movies that they've been coming out with, especially The Last Jedi. I want to talk about what the hell is going on in the Lucasfilm camp. And most recently, we hear news from Tony Gilroy, who was brought in late in production to fix the disaster that was happening with Rogue One, in the same way Ron Howard was brought in to fix the disaster that was going on in the Han Solo production. Tony Gilroy opened up about what was going on. He even states that Rogue One was just a mess before the reshoots. And his quote was, I've never been interested in Star Wars ever, so I had no reverence for it whatsoever. I was unafraid about that. And they were in such a swamp. They were in so much terrible, terrible trouble that all you could do was improve their position. This is a guy who doesn't even care about Star Wars. And he goes in there and just sees he's just a movie guy. He knows how to make movies. He goes in there and sees, oh my gosh, they are just, this is an absolute mess. And he goes in there to fix this problem, this disaster, which Rogue One apparently was in production, an absolute disaster. And thanks to Tony Gilroy, it was actually salvaged. That's probably why it's halfway decent. I actually like it. A lot of people don't. It does have its problems. But now we see their second anthology film, Solo, uh, Lucasfilm's second anthology film, and they're having horrible problems as well, as far as we could tell, the same kind of problems. So much so that they fired their directors, Lord and Miller, deep into production, and an actor that was on set, he came out publicly stated with a website called Vulture that the production was divided into two distinct chapters. One, disorganized and chaotic, which of course was referring to how things were going with um, Lord and Miller, and one, controlled and efficient, referring to the Ron Howard era of the solo production. So these directors, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, were, and I quote, good directors but they weren't prepared for Star Wars. So I have one question. Why the heck were they hired? Not only hired, but not fired until nearly all shooting was complete. And why is this happening again after the same thing happened on Rogue One? Now it's happening with uh, Solo, or it recently was happening. They had to replace their director, bring in Ron Howard to fix everything. Oh, and Kathleen Kennedy also hired Colin Trevorrow for Episode Nine. I'm not saying he would have made a great movie, but here's what Mark Hamill had to say about him. Uh, I had discussions with Colin and I was very excited because we were on the same page in terms of uh, where we wanted to go and how we wanted to see Luke in a way we've never seen him, even in, in this current uh, version. Anyway, he was fired as director and J.J. Abrams, 
who I think is quite the company man, and I think he's pretty much going to do what whatever Kathleen Kennedy tells him, although I do like him more than Ryan Johnson, but he's brought back to replace um, Trevorrow and to write and direct Nine. And Trevorrow, Lord, Miller, all these guys who I've mentioned, that's not even all. More have been fired. Josh Trank directed Fantastic Four. He was supposed to direct a Star Wars anthology film. Fired. Michael Arndt, who did Toy Story 3, he was the original writer hired to write and make The Force Awakens. Fired. I'm just wondering what the hell is going on. Why are you hiring people just to fire them? Okay, it happens sometimes. It happens. You can fire someone if they're not getting the job done. I completely understand that. But... I mean, and some of these guys were fired early in the process, but the final product is still crap and usually loaded with all kinds of social justice warrior crap and weak stories and plot holes and we don't like them. And why are the movies sucking despite the fact that you're firing all these people to get the right people? I mean, except for me, Rogue One, but that one was so bad they had to bring in a veteran filmmaker to fix it, like just with a few weeks left. Like, hurry up and fix this. Okay, okay, get it out. And that's probably why it's decent. And that's why... Solo, I have some hope for, which I don't even want that hope. I'm back. That's going to be the subject of my next video. I need people to help bring my expectations down for this movie. Um, and then we get The Last Jedi. Massive disappointment. Fans don't like it. And the man responsible, Ryan Johnson, does he get fired? I mean, it's too late to fire him from The Last Jedi, but does he get fired from Star Wars? No. Ryan Johnson's trilogy gets approval, and he's going to make a whole new trilogy that no one cares about, no one's excited about, people don't want it, people hate The Last Jedi, Kathleen Kennedy does not care, and he's still allowed to make these new movies going forward. Probably because he'll do whatever she says as far as social justice warrior stuff, he probably guarantees a woman's going to be the main protagonist for the trilogy, and it's going to be focused on all the kinds of stuff, whatever she's into doesn't matter that The Last Jedi was poorly received. doesn't matter that he made this movie despite warnings from even Mark Hamill that there's, there's a big problem here, that he hates this version of Luke. And he does hate that version of Luke. Don't care what he says in the last month or two. If you think that Mark Hamill's changed his tune because of what he's been saying lately, you give, give me a freaking break. You don't think he was chewed out by Disney? You don't think they said, Mark, you need to stop talking trash about the film, okay? You get big paychecks from us. Okay, stop saying you fundamentally disagree with this. You know, if you need to get on board because we're paying you a bunch of money and you need to get on board with us here and start, you know, helping us out here. And Mark, I'm sure, said, you know, yeah, this is probably unprofessional for saying that. I'll put it on an apology. And he's done that. And since then, he's been on board. And he's been um, basically Ryan Johnson's right-hand man. Yeah, notice Mark Hamill's always sitting right next to Ryan Johnson in the interview. He's trying to do the best they can to get us Star Wars fans back on board. Oh, he's, if he's any friend of Mark, is a friend of mine. Get the heck out of here, dude. Mark Hamill don't like that dude any more than we do. Okay, can we just agree that Kathleen Kennedy's not doing a good job? She's not the right person for this job to be the CEO of Lucasfilm. In charge of making Star Wars movies, video games, books, she's on the top? She's the, she's the woman in charge? She doesn't know the first freaking thing about Star Wars. She doesn't care. In an interview she started doing uh, after she got the job, she started talking about like the Force is female. Little girls can't relate to Luke Skywalker because he's a boy. Are you kidding me? So, okay, Rey is the new protagonist. She's a girl. Okay, it's fine. Rogue One comes out. It's a girl too. Okay, yeah, not surprising, but it's fine. doesn't take away from my enjoyment of the movie because I'm not a freaking sexist pig. Okay, I don't care. If you want to make a girl the lead character, go ahead, Kathy. Make a girl the lead character. I don't care. I'm still going to enjoy the movie. That doesn't stop me from enjoying the movie. But then in The Last Jedi goes overboard. We got purple hair girl. We got Rose, Rose's sister, white men, all villains, non-white men. You could be good, but you're going to be idiots, fools, flyboys. What the hell is going on? How is she not fired? Everyone is getting fired but her. That's all I got. I'm getting pissed off just talking about it. Let me know what you think. Put something in the comments. Help out the video. Share. Subscribe. I don't care. I don't care what you do. Type in something in the comments. I don't care. Say like, type like crazy crab. You're an idiot. And I'll be like, thank you. And it's all good. See you guys next time. Peace.